I guess I'll just just hold this. Hi. Um, for those of you who haven't seen me in a while, who don't follow me on Instagram, hello. Um, I have been creating some awesome art on Instagram. And I'm going to react to the comments that I have been receiving on a couple of the posts. I'll probably do three because there are a lot of comments. Um, and there are always some that I find entertaining or unnecessary or definitely worth a look-see. This is also like an easy way for me to like return to making long form content. I want to like talk about ideas and shit and uh, responding to people is an easy way to do that. So I'll start with this post. Let's see what we got. All right. So I have the first comment that I pinned goat. I like when people call me the goat. <laughs> the goat of what? I don't know. Rooftopping. Uh, there are a lot of goats in rooftopping. Uh, greatest of all time. I would say the goat of goats probably in my opinion is angela nicolau that girl that russian girl a lot of followers obviously that's not the main metric but it, the quality or quantity of your audience uh, does matter she has reached the most people and positively impacted the most people with rooftopping so i would probably say her so apparently there isn't a way to easily like grab these comments off of this phone so i'm gonna record on this phone whatever that's the change in quality yeah so there are a lot of goats in rooftopping i don't know all of them um there are some ogs uh steve duncan <laughs> people a lot of people don't know who that is uh early documentary made on this guy he is not even just a rooftopping goat but like a um urbex goat all around he traversed the entirety of the Paris catacombs, the underground catacombs, from one side of Paris to the other side, and he only got up and walked across one block on street level, because uh, apparently he had to, which is a little bit odd, but yeah, insane. I don't know how many miles of underground tunnels that is, but that's a level of urban exploration and genuine care for the art and experience that I don't know if I would ever match I'm sure I could but I don't know if I would have the interest of doing and yeah in the Paris catacombs they have people who attack you just because you're walking by where they're staying because they're tunnel people and they're territorial I was gonna say that they're crazy but I don't like ever calling people crazy side tangents if pushed to one person's edge anybody if pushed to one's edge anybody will um, resemble craziness and a lot of people have like interpersonal support structures that they take for granted and so yeah don't judge homeless people and don't judge crazy people but yeah steve duncan um there was an documentary made on him and he was like one of the first people to popularize climbing the Williamsburg Bridge in Manhattan sick motherfucker and that was like mind blowing to anyone back in the day that, oh my god you can climb a bridge in Manhattan and I actually met this guy in person and we were supposed to climb um, not, not climb but actually explore tunnels with uh, with I think it was like shin high water like or soot or mud in the tunnels and it was him and another guy and me and i was already exhausted i was pulling an all-nighter and i had a uh, class in the morning and the moment i heard yeah we're gonna be walking through water i was like i'll sleep in the car <laughs> i wish i had done it i think i don't know i wish i'd spent more time with this guy because uh, he is incredible with the things that he has done but yeah look up steve duncan He's one of the goats of New York, goats of all time. Um, I think that guy from On the Roofs had a really big cultural impact um, worldwide. Raskolov, um, I've never, I th I've spoken to him once in person, but I, I have no other personal relationship beyond that. And yeah, I would say in terms of my goat status, <laughs> uh, definitely for New York, I would say like, there are different kinds of greatest of all times, right? Like there are people, greatest of all time. There are people who 
um, have climbed the most buildings or explored the most places. There are people who have taken the best photographs. There are people who um, have gained the largest audience and affected the most people. I think what I can genuinely say and I'm very proud of is in terms of like quality of emotionally impactful content that inspires other people, I would say that for New York, greatest of all time, that goes to me. <laughs> and that sounds so vain, but I love being matter of fact about it. And I, yeah, I feel great about it. And it's something that I actually identify with and I'm actually really proud of. So there's this kid, um, Tom Durante, he's been in a lot of buildings. Um, and I don't even, I'm not even sure if he likes I, my content. I think he hates my content. I'm not sure, uh, but got to give him credit. He's done a lot. Um, he was the first to hit a lot. Um, and then there are a lot of low-key people that don't even post anything that have hit all the rooftops in New York and legitimately, like, all the office buildings, hundreds of buildings, um, all of the most difficult ones. They're pioneers in terms of figuring out how to get into buildings. And, yeah, they do it for for the love of the game. Um, but, yeah, there are different sects to rooftoping. There are different reasons why people do it. Some people just want attention. Some people really like creating. Some people really like sharing their photography, and then they move on to other kinds of photography. And some people just like exploring, as well as other people who just like meeting people. Yeah. Am I still recording? Yes. So that is my response to that goat comment. Gosh, there's so many tangents I could take on this. Um, I'm going to continue. All right, let's see what else we got. <laughs> my butthole just clenched that. Always funny. Love that. Um, people shouldn't take rooftopping too seriously. They shouldn't take anything too seriously. There are a lot of people who are extremely uptight <laughs> about exploration and urban exploration specifically and they're fucking nerds <laughs> I don't like being a judgmental person um, I don't like calling people a loser or a nerd but you're a fucking nerd if <laughs> if you uh, take something that is illegal too seriously and want to put too many rules around something that is illegal now I understand like you want to preserve the art and preserve the spots etc etc but if it's you know, if you're doing something that most people would already deem as uh, quote-unquote retarded or um, that would already judge you for doing, then who are you to judge other people for doing it? That's, that's my take on it. But I do understand people like preserving things. People like they do not like when certain people exploit urban, urban exploration. Um, yeah, just like ruin rooftops for views, etc. And I've been accused of that, and people definitely see me that way. Some people definitely see me that way. Actually, I should probably address that. I'll, I'll I should make a whole video about that. But why do I rooftop? Um, wow, that's gonna take a while. But it's not just for views, but that is a big part of it. I I do like being an artist, and I do want to succeed and do awesome things with my life and. Um, creating amazing art that gets a, lo a lot of attention is part of that. Um, but it's definitely not, uh, look at me, I need to be cool, I need everyone to think I'm cool. I don't give a fuck about what people think about me, um, at all. <laughs> I just want to make deep connections and do awesome things. And, yeah, uh, rooftoping is part of that. My dick got hard, shout out to Dancer, awesome YouTuber. Love that guy. I already responded to him with the drool emoji. So that's good. That is my response. Love dancer. Solid dude. Should stop posting this stupidity. Um, I mean, there isn't much to say about that. I just got excited because it was the first, like, hateful comment that I saw. Um, I understand why people think it's stupid. You can't expect everyone to um, understand an extreme art or an extreme sport. And in fact, the more people that don't understand it, um, the more you're satisfying the, port of, 
the point of doing art in the first place, which is to expand people's understanding or challenge people's understanding. Ooh, this, this is a big one. Okay. Does your mother know you do this? How does she feel knowing that her son risks his life daily climbing tall buildings just to hang from the outside and take pictures for social media and fearful that one day you may not come home? Do you ever stop to think about it? So, wow, this is going to be a long video. I might stop it here. But yeah, I'm actually getting a little emotional about it. Um, my mom fucking sucked when I was a teenager. And in a very particular way. There are, in, there are many ways in which she was amazing. She took care of me. I lived exclusively with her beyond the age of 13. She did everything that she could. She's not a perfect person. I don't expect her to be perfect, etc., etc., etc. But the inner child in me is like, what the fuck, mom? Like, she was extremely resistant to the one thing that I felt most inspired to do. Um, oh, God. And there were so many times where... I allowed her fear and worry and guilt tripping of what I wanted to do to hold me back emotionally. Which was a formative experience for me, I guess. But yeah, like my heart literally hurts just thinking about this because I needed encouragement. My father didn't really encourage me. Um, he was... Um, he was not present for a while um, by choice of me. We didn't have the best relationship when I was a teenager. And so I'd never had really an encouraging force behind anything that I was interested in, whether it was parkour acrobatics or um, rooftoping. And it like literally hurts to, to, to share this. Oh, man. And yeah, like... One can say I am being self-centered in the way that I'm describing this, but it was really painful. I needed encouragement as a teenager. I needed someone to see what I loved doing in my light, my inner light, and, and fan the flame to it. And all I got was resistance from every angle. And wow, there is so much pain behind there. And so yeah, it hurt to see my mom hurt, but it was more aggravating and I needed more encouragement than to be held back. And any parent who is frustrated with their child because their child is making them worried is a shitty fucking parent. Like, fuck you. Your kid wants to do something amazing with his life. <sighs> and you're being selfish. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, if you are genuinely concerned for his safety, then take precautionary measures and make sure that he is being cautious and as safe as he possibly can. But to try to scare him or guilt trip him and to kill his inner light and to try him, to make him be a safe and square and nice little boy... Yeah, fuck you for that. <laughs> Very painful. All right. Let's keep going. If one day bro stop posting, we all know why. Obvious. Has a lot of likes. A lot of people seem to... A lot of people seem to... Like, have a... What's it called? A death wish for me? Maybe because they think I'm, like, doing this in a very obnoxious way. Yeah, I, I don't know. If you have nothing better to do than to wish death on people on the internet, you probably have an awful life. So I would encourage anybody who does that um, to look in the mirror and improve their lives and not wish death on anybody because that is bad for your mind. Let's see. Ooh, I like this one. Heart made of steel. He gets it. Shout out to that guy. Let's find something that is like, that I can talk more deeply about. I get a lot of comments about corded earphones, like wired headphones. I wear them because people can actually hear me when I talk to them on the phone. Like, fuck AirPods for that. <laughs> I love AirPods, but yeah. And they're also like cheaper. They're like 20 bucks or $17. I'm not paying $120 for headphones that I'll lose or that'll break. Yeah, fuck all that. Um, wired headphones are the way to go. 
I just unfollowed you because I'm not going to feed your need for attention. Good luck staying alive. Hey, he's trying to make a decision with integrity, so good for him. I have unfollowed people for um, my own, like, for my own integrity reasons, you know, not being happy with what they do um, or with their kinds of content, etc. So I get it. If he thinks I'm doing it that way, then it makes sense. Here's another one. Still waiting for your last video with the laughing emojis. It's like, that's crazy. <laughs> My assumption is that all of these people think, like, I'm just this really obnoxious kid who needs everybody to look at him. Uh, couldn't be further from the truth, but whatever. All right, I'll try to find one more. I'm actually really happy with how this video turned out. All right, I'm going to try to make all of the next videos about like responding to comments not talking about like people who talk about me dying <laughs> um but this one seems um interesting what's sad is none of these people survive it's actually not true and i actually get riled up when people um give hate or say that i'm going to die it's like i get like really like what is it invigorated because it's it's a reminder that when I'm hyper successful <laughs> uh, and I'm living in, living an amazing life, life beyond any of these people's wildest dreams, and I'm still alive, um, everyone can can look and realize that they were wrong, and I can smirk and kick both my hands up and kick my feet up and just relax and say, "Yeah, I won. You lost. <laughs> Fuck you." Um, for those of you who have, who have stuck around and who are still interested in seeing the things that I'm up to, hi. Um, thanks for sticking around. I guess I can do a life update, but I don't even know where to begin, you know. I'm changing so much all the time, and people never really knew who I was. So I guess that's a good place to start. Who was I and who am I now? Well, I was always someone who was very, like, interested in creating awesome art. And I was always someone who was interested in doing crazy things, uh, doing extreme things. And I was always someone who was interested in ideas. And all of those things have kind of developed over the past four to six years. Um, I was in a really painful place um, when I stopped uploading YouTube videos. I went through a lot of shit when I was a kid. And all of that, like, trauma led to me not being able to process emotions and it led to me having so much emotional and mental tension as a young 20 something year old that I felt like I was going insane like I was having hallucinations and I would spend like seven days in my room just writing just trying to figure shit out not eating being a fucking thought addict a thinking addict um, just in bed in the worst of positions having night terrors sleep paralysis etc and I learned how to process my emotions, and I went on a spiritual journey, and um, I've learned a lot about how to heal my mind, master my mind, master my emotions. Um, I've learned a lot about incredible ways of being and living effortlessly and becoming the kind of person that I always wanted to be. And that's what my hiatus has been, and I wish you guys could have seen the struggle, but I just wasn't in a, in a capable place in terms of being able to just edit and share that with the world. I'll tell stories. Um, but yeah, so who I was and who I am, I'm someone who's been through a lot of pain, and I hate when people play the victim. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just being as authentic as I po possibly can be. I'm someone who's been through a lot of pain and learned how to manage it all, I would say most of it, but the real answer is all of it, which is nice. And I still have a really strong to des desire to live an amazing life, and uh, you guys will hopefully see all that. And um, I'll be as authentic and as extreme as I am, and um, I'm excited for y'all to see so I'll see you in the next video